Hi everybody. This video is to help you with your molar volume of a gas lab. The procedure can be a little physically tricky. Um, when you first start getting started, have one of your group members prepare the reaction itself. Here I have some 3% hydrogen peroxide. We're going to measure about 15 milliliters of it. Make sure that your eye is level with your markings on the graduated cylinder. Measure about 15. I got 16 that time, but that's okay. What really matters is our change in mass in this lab. We're going to be measuring the mass so we can figure out the moles. And we are going to be measuring the volume of the gas produced. In the tiny test tube, the person who's in charge of the reaction is going to add a little bit of DI water. So about halfway through that test tube. Then you're going to add four drops of iron three chloride. Now this solution is very corrosive. So make sure you're wearing gloves. Don't touch it. Okay. Now the next step is pretty tricky. You have to slide the test tube into the Erlenmeyer flask and kind of rotate it around so that the test tube won't fall. It's actually pretty hard to do. Uh, I would test this with your test tube before you put the liquids in. And make sure that your test tube is just long enough so that it will balance itself above the liquid line. Then we're going to take the mass of this Erlenmeyer flask plus the reactants. Wait for your scale to zero and place the flask down. Write down the mass of flask A and its contents in your lab notebook. Now we can set this aside. Again, make sure that you don't start the reaction. If you start the reaction, you're going to lose some of your product. And that is not good. It will lead to a large amount of error. Now to set up the tube system. First thing you want to do is place your very very jerry-rigged large stopper into the 100, rather 1,000 milliliter volumetric flask. Make sure the water line on that volumetric flask is almost to the top of the neck, just enough for a small amount of gas on the top. Next, you're going to stick the tube into flask C, or rather beaker C, which is filled with a bunch of tap water. Have another wash bottle empty. Remove the pointy part and the stopper. You can go ahead and store that on the flask A and squeeze the air out of your DI water bottle. I know that we're supposed to use stoppers, but since we don't have any, we're going to create a vacuum using the water bottle. Now I'm going to stop it about there. Now we have water filling this tube and it's almost up to the stopper line. You don't want the water to touch the stopper line because then we're going to have a bunch of errors. I'm going to tie the stopper back on here. It'll let some of the air back in. So I'll stop it now. And what we can do to make sure that we don't have any bubbles in the tube is mess with the level of water available like this. When you raise it up and down, it will actually move the water inside the tube. So make sure that you don't have very many air bubbles in this tube, and then we can get started. Okay. Now, the best thing to do is to have one of your partners hold the tip of this tube, another partner pour the water into the sink or into your water bath. Now we can get going. At this point, carefully shake the iron three chloride into the reaction 
Make sure that stopper's on there tight and watch it go. As the hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it's going to produce oxygen gas. And that gas is going to travel through the tube, start pushing this water down, and the water will flow up through the other tube and be displaced into beaker C. We can figure out the volume of oxygen produced by measuring the volume of water that's displaced. Because this re reaction is exothermic, we're going to want to keep it in a water bath so that it doesn't get too warm. This reaction will take several minutes, so make sure that you guys know what you're doing and you can set up your lab and get it going as soon as possible, as safely as possible. About 18 minutes later, your reaction will be finished. To make sure, uh, you can swirl your reaction mixture, and if no more bubbles are appearing, that means your reaction is complete. At this point, you have to do a couple of things. Uh, you need to take the temperature of both of the reaction mixtures. Please make sure that you remove the tubing from all the beakers. It's okay if water gets places. It's just water. Try not to get it on your notebook though. That might be bad. Uh, we need to dry off the beaker. Uh, we need to take the mass of the beaker and we need to collect temperatures. So we'll dry this off because that's what we did when we took the mass the first time. The mass should be smaller. If it's not smaller, it's wrong. Mine is smaller, so hooray. Next thing, temperature. You guys will probably be using our Vernier probeware. So that's what I have set up. Make sure it's in Celsius. Wait for it to equilibrate. If you need to, rinse just a little bit. Wait for it to even out. Then you can average those two temperatures later. The next thing you'll have to measure is the volume of the gas collected. So the gas collected push this water out of your middle container. Uh, I've got about 150-ish. Mm, I will measure this using a graduated cylinder. It will introduce a little bit of air because my cylinder is not big enough to do it all at once. So I will have to make sure I use the correct sig figs when I'm adding these volumes. So this first one is just over a hundred, so maybe like a hundred point five. Get rid of this water. Make sure it's all dry. about 31.2. At this point, you have all the information from your lab that you need. You can do the rest of your calculations at home. However, we need to be very careful about how we dispose of the iron 3 chloride. I would make sure you put on gloves again. And we're going to have a special waste container just for the iron 3 chloride. It will be labeled waste iron 3 chloride. It helps if you have the gloves on first. Alright. 
here's our waste container. And our oven liner flask. And funnel. We're going to carefully pour. Now the reason I have my glove on is because of this nifty thing. Be very careful when you're trying to remove your test tube. You can actually really hurt yourself. So what we're gonna do, very carefully, is grab a brush from the sink and we're going to try and get the loop around the test tube. Some of the test tubes will remain loose in the containers and that's better for you. This one seems to be permanently stuck. Well, if yours gets stuck like mine did, don't worry about it. We have about 10,000 of these Erlenmeyer flasks and I will have someone cool off the glass later. It might shrink a little bit and then we can get it out. So, don't worry. However, do not try and stick your fingers into the Erlenmeyer flask that just had a corrosive material in it. And don't try and force the glass out. You're only going to break it if that happens. So if it gets stuck, like this one did, just let me know and leave it there. And I hope that this helps you with your procedure for our lab.